All right. So now we're going to need to consider some more maps. Okay, so let's let iota sub v denote the inclusion um, where we invert invert v. Uh, we, that's a V. We can also do the same thing with U. So that's just the inclusion. Uh, let's reinvert U. Great. Um, Remember, we also have this chain homotopy equivalence between these, right? That was this V sub S that I wrote right here. So we, we have this map. So these are homotopy equivalent uh, via um, V, which will just be the direct sum of these V sub S's. OK, great. So we've done a bunch of algebraic things. We have this homotopy equivalence there. And so now I'm going to build a chain map. So let's define the chain map dn. It's going to go from here to here. So it's going to go from the knot floor complex uh, to uh, the one where we've inverted V. Great, so what is DN going to be? Okay. Uh, so it's going to be iota sub V. Plus, OK, uh, maybe you're tempted to just take this composition here. Uh, we want some dependence on n somewhere. So we're actually going to add to that v to the n composed with v composed with iota u. Great. So here's just some chain map we've concocted. All right. Um, let me remind you of some construction from homological algebra. So recall, if you're given a chain map, right? So remember, a chain map well it commutes with the differential. Uh, you can form the mapping cone of a chain map. So it's a chain complex called cone of F. So the underlying vector space group module, what have you, is just the direct sum of your original ones. Um, maybe you want to put a grading shift on here, but I'm going to ignore that. <coughs> and now, so I've told you what the underlying uh, vector space or module is. So now I need to tell you what the boundary map is. So the boundary of x comma y, well, um, so x lives in x, so you take the x boundary of that. And now uh, this is going to be f of x uh, plus the y boundary of y. And this is, um, I'm working over uh, characteristic 2. Uh, so if you're not working over characteristic 2, you need some plus or minus signs depending on the gradings of things. But over characteristic two, you don't have to worry about plus or minus signs. So life is great. 
Okay. All right. So, well, we have a chain map here, and it turns out that the mapping cone of that chain map is exactly what we want. So theorem, uh, student Ajvat and Zabo, I guess Ajvat and Zabo stated it for um, HF plus and we're doing it for HF minus, so I guess that's stated by uh, Manolescu Ajvat. So this says that, well, let n be any integer. HF minus, um, so remember I, <coughs> I said something about complete and coefficients, so we, uh, yeah, we need to work with completed coefficients. So you can just do that as follows. Um, this is isomorphic to the homology of the mapping cone of this map dn. And so, as, as before, right, this is a F adjoined W module. And then here, we should think of this as being a module of F adjoined W instead of, instead of U on the left hand side in here. Great. Um, and in fact, uh, you can make, you can, this is, you can actually uh, upgrade this to a statement about graded modules, uh, which we won't do. Um, but remark, uh, can upgrade to um, an isomorphism of absolutely graded modules. Uh, and then, well, okay, so we did this for integer surgery, but in fact, there's a very similar formula for rational surgery. So there's a similar formula. For rational surgery. Great, and um, so we've stated this for HF minus. There's also a similar formula for HF hat, right? So sort of <coughs> the rule for HF hat is, well, just on the chain level, set your, uh, set your variable equal to zero. So we have the following corollary, just that, uh, so n is any integer. Uh, HF hat of n surgery on K is isomorphic to the homology of the cone of dn hat, where um, dn hat is just put hats over all the everything from the previous formula. So this is a u. Um, so more explicitly, so basically, anywhere where you had your uh, not floor complex, uh, instead of thinking of it as a module over F join UV, think of it as a module over F join UV mod UV equals zero. So for example, this map here is a map from this. to that same complex where we've inverted u. Um, sorry. Right. right, so just anywhere where you used to just have your ordinary not flow complex now, just quotient by uv equals zero. All right. Um, 
So the, the proof of this map and cone formula um, sort of uses, uses the large uh, integer surgery formula that I stated at the beginning of today combined with uh, the exact triangle. Right? So sort of we saw, we saw that these maps, um, iota u and iota v, well, those are really cobordism maps. Right? And in fact, they correspond to the cobordism maps in a certain exact triangle. And then there's some homological statement that if you have um, like an exact triangle, uh, the exact triangle comes from some distinguished triangle. And so you sort of have this map and cone statement that goes into some homological algebra. Questions? OK, so great. So we spent, we spent this week talking about um, these invariants coming from uh, this, you know, this package of invariants, uh, Hager full homology. But you know, I'm a low-dimensional topologist, and so it'd be nice, it'd be nice to know that these invariants actually tell us some new things about maybe some three manifolds. So I want to I want to tell you about some applications that rely on this map and cone formula. Great. Um, so there's something called the sort of cutely named the cosmetic surgery conjecture. Which says that uh, let K be a non-trivial knot in the three sphere. Well, it says that um, if R surgery and R prime surgery give you homeomorphic manifolds. Um, this is orientation preserving. Well, then the surgery coefficients actually had to be the same. Uh, so, oh, here, here these can be rational numbers. And so uh, using the mapping cone formula, uh, Ni and Wu were able to um, prove the following statement. So this is in 2010. Uh, <coughs> so suppose uh, K is a non-trivial knot. And suppose that R surgery is orientation preserving homeomorphic to R prime surgery. Well, then they proved that um, R and R prime had to differ by a sign, and that they were a, a rational number of the form P over Q, where P and Q were co prime. And uh, Q squared is congruent to negative one mod P. And so uh, part of their proof was using the mapping cone formula to understand what the Hager flow homologies of each of these looked like. So in particular, as you vary the surgery coefficient, well, you know that these have to be homeomorphic so that their um, Hager flow groups are the same, and sort of um, studying what, what that said through the mapping cone formula allowed them to get at this result. Um, oh, no, oh, no, I just said that. So they proved that the surgery coefficients have to uh, be, have opposite signs. Yeah. It's uh, maybe worth remarking that uh, that uh, Ni and Wu's result was recently improved um, within the past month or so by uh, Jonathan Hanselman. Um, so he recently uh, improved that result. Uh, 
uh, to actually significantly improved it um, that, oh. Right, so R and R prime differ by a sign, and they have to either be uh, plus or minus two or plus or minus one over Q. Uh, great, and so uh, he did this using uh, bordered floor homology, which is a generalization of Hagar floor homology to three manifolds with boundary. And in particular, uh, Jonathan Hanselman, Liam Watson, and Jake Westmason have a reformulation of bordered floor homology in terms of immersed curves. And that's what he uses to get this improvement. So let me give you one more example of an application of the mapping call. So this is an application to surgery obstructions. So it's a theorem, uh, which I understand that the um, undergraduate summer school is currently proving. I did a licorice and Wallace which says that every closed-oriented three-manifold can be obtained by surgery on a link in S3. So <clears throat> once you know this fact, well, a natural question is, um, well, can, okay, you need every, every three manifold can be maintained by surgery on a link. What about surgery on a knot? Um, and so, in fact, well, the answer is, is no, right? So, can every three manifold be obtained by surgery? on a not in S3. And so the answer to this question is no. So um, note that H1 of P over Q surgery on K is cyclic. So in particular, um, as long if you have a three manifold with H1 not cyclic, so for example, RP3 connects some RP3, uh, this cannot be obtained by surgery on a knot because its first homology is not cyclic. Okay, but what if you only look at three manifolds for which this obstruction vanishes? I.e., what if you only look at homology spheres? <coughs> Can you obstruct a homology sphere from being surgery on a knot? Um, and in fact, one can. So this is first done by uh, Dave Ockley. So he showed that uh, there exist uh, integer homology spheres that are not obtained by surgery on a knot in S3. Uh, so his, uh, uh, he gave a hyperbolic example and a toroidal example. Um, and in fact, you can generate, uh, his technique gives uh, infinitely many such three manifolds. Um, but then using the mapping cone formula, uh, one, can, one can give a new proof of this result and in fact uh, show that there are um, three scone homology spheres that are not obtained by surgery on a knot. Uh, so this is a uh, joint work with uh, Chara Karakert and Ty Lidman. Um, so we proved that the integer homology spheres uh, sigma 2k, 4k minus 1, 4k plus 1 for k greater than or equal to 4. are not obtained by surgery on a not in S3. 
And so we proved this uh, theorem by um, coming up with a Hager floor obstruction to be in surgery on a knot in S3. So using the mapping cone formula, we show that if you're a three manifold that's obtained by surgery on a knot in S3, there's a particular relationship between your D invariant and your reduced Hager floor homology. Um, so I'll stop there. Thank you.